57 ME, the four, here we go. Burgess, Erskine, Will Collins, give it a little nudge to the 42, let him know he's there. Alex Walt sitting in fourth, and Roy, uh, sorry, uh, Connor Winters was in fifth. Put Brent Roy up into the fourth spot. Big crowd of cars back there, giving a chance for Ben Erskine in that four to stretch his legs a little bit. Will Collins in second, Chris Burgess in third. A span on the front stretch, there goes DC Alexander. Onto the grass to see if he's able to get that thing going. Yellow comes out. Base car pulls off, we're back underway. Erskine and Will Collins. Leading them into one and two this time. Will looking to the outside of the four. Will sitting in third in points right now. Pretty good season for the guy in the 25. Kind of a tough year for Ben Erskine. Erskine, though, able to stretch him out and puts that car up into first place. Will Collins settles down into second place with Burgess in third. Roy fourth. Alex Waltz is your fifth place car, but he's getting a little work over there by the four car of Connor Winters. Scott Hall in seventh. Frank Moulton, who's had a pretty good season. Great win here about a month ago. A little longer than that. So Chris Thorne is now up into 10th place. One spot ahead of St. Clair. Chris in that 17 kind of caught up in that mess. A lot of cars ahead of him. Up front, it's still Ben Erskine in that four car. Him and Will Collins, one and two, have stretched out that lead quite a bit. Chris Burgess solidly in third. Brent Roy in fourth as a yellow turn three. And ready to get this one going again. Erskine leads him across the line. That four car looking pretty racy today. Will Collins trying to hang with him down the back stretch. Burgess sits in third once again. He's having a good day so far. Alex Wall sitting in fourth. And there's a battle between Brent Roy and Scott Hall for that fifth place spot. Brent Roy though stuck on the outside. He's gonna lose the spot to Hall. And here comes Frank Moulton to put him back into seventh. Actually that's gonna push We got three, four cars coming together in between turns one and two. Connor Winters has come to a stop along the wall. Everyone else has driven Boy. away in the 25, ready to get things going one more time. Will Collins, Ben Erskine. Erskine's been able to jump out and grab a lead on all these restarts. Will seeming to keep up with him a little bit better this time. They are door to door out of three and four. Erskine's gonna grab the lead the first time by. Burgess holds onto that third spot. And more trouble, oh the 12. Saved it, Dave Getchell. Looks like he got up on the curbing a little bit but able to keep from losing it. Ben Erskine up into first place. Will Collins holds on to that second spot. 
Here comes Thorny in the 17. Looking to the outside of the 47 ME. Trying to get some of those points back. Heading into their final race later tonight. Chris Thorne up into third. Burgess back into fourth. Where is the 14? Josh St. Clair sitting in seventh last time by. Now the work is underway for Chris Thorne. As now he has to stop down the leaders. Ben Erskine is your leader in the four. Will Collins in the 25 is in second. Erskine in that four car still putting down some pretty good laps. He has your fast lap. Oh, sorry, Will Collins does it, 15 and a half. Chris Burgess in the 47 ME in the fourth place car has dropped back a ways. Chris Thorne, eye test, kind of telling you he's having a little trouble. Closing in on the 25. The first and second place car is still a little bit faster than Thorne right now. Josh St. Clair now looking to get around the 47 to jump up into fourth. Burgess trying to hold him off. There goes St. Clair to the outside of Burgess going down the back stretch. And here comes Thorne. He is closing that gap on Will Collins. Erskine's going to have the eight car, a little lap traffic to deal with. St. Clair out around the 47 to take away the fourth spot. Put Burgess back into fifth. Here comes McLaughlin in the 26th. Erskine around the lap car of Phillips. So is Will Collins. So is Chris Thorne. McLaughlin has worked his way up into sixth place. He's setting his sights on Burgess for a top five spot. Looking up front again, Chris Thorne closing in on Will Collins just a little bit every time. Probably gonna need a caution though to catch the four car. McLaughlin settles in a line behind Burgess. Behind McLaughlin is Frank Moulton. Thorne has caught the 25. The 17 looking to the outside of Will Collins. Will's been fast all day. It's going to be tough work for Thorny to get around him. Then it's a good straightaway back to the fourth place car of Josh St. Clair. Things about to become interesting for Ben Erskine. He has got a whole host of lap traffic ahead of him. Thorny looks to the outside, gets it shut off by Will Collins. Again, looking to the inside of the 25. Almost able to get that fender down under there. Ben Erskine trying to make his way through this lap traffic as quick as he can. These guys don't want to go a lap down. They don't want to open the door for him.
As I thought, Thorne having a little trouble getting around the 25. Ben Erskine through the first group of lap traffic. Erskine, Collins, Thorne, St. Clair, and McLaughlin. That's your top five. Will Collins in behind Brent Roy in the 26. Chris Thorne looking to the inside of the 25. He may get caught up behind Roy and he does. Thorne had a shot but he got caught up behind the lap traffic. Now he's looking to the outside of Will Collins. Three laps to go this time by. Chris Thorne, Will Collins, that battle for second. Something to watch right now. Lap traffic around, let's see what that causes. Both get by it easily. They're out into clean air. Thorne and Collins. Josh Sinclair sits in your fourth spot right now. Andrew McLaughlin just crossing the line now is in fifth. White flag flies. Thorne looking to the outside of the 25. Will Collins fighting back. He's held him off for about 20 laps and it looks like he's gonna be able to do it. Will Collins holds on for second. Thorne will finish third. St. Clair fourth and rounding out your top five is that guy right there, Andrew McLaughlin in the 26. You really, you really give it all you had the last 10 or 15 laps. You guys had a great race. Obviously, you guys were catching lap traffic at the time that you didn't want to catch it, but still to end up on the podium, great field of cars, and uh, talk about your race. Well, it was a little frustrating at first. Uh, those first couple cautions, I just couldn't go anywhere. Traffic backed up. I knew these two were going to be hard to catch because they were up front, and they've been fast today, so I had to use it up a little bit to get to them, and I just didn't have quite enough to get around Will. I was... Hoping to use some of those lap cars to pick him off, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, no, but a great job by you. Congratulations on a third place finish. You got one more race today. What do you make for adjustments to try to make it better for the next race? Well, I mean, it really wasn't that bad. Uh, it's just these guys are really good, too. Uh, we might tweak a couple little things. We'll check the stagger. We got a little free towards the end, but we'll check it over and come back out for the last one. All right, that's Chris Thorne, your third place finisher. Well, that's got to be one of the toughest second place finishes you've ever had to work for, huh? Yeah, it was a, it was a handful after four or five laps, but uh, I don't know. This, this stinks. <laughs> I want to win. <laughs> don't get depressed, Bob. Don't go home shoot the do don't go home shoot the dog. But uh, no, I mean you. Yeah, you you battled for the lead early. I think once you realized you had the better car, you settled in, tried to save some stuff, and it's good you had some stuff left at the end when Chris caught you. Yeah, I saw Chris come in at, at that point. It was just I knew I wasn't going to win, so it was just you know try to hang on, get second. But we got one more chance. Just hate hate finishing second. <laughs> yeah, I know it. But uh, there's your disappointed second place finisher, Will Collins. And uh, but you got one more shot, and good luck in the second feature today. Thank you. I just got to thank uh, Rockland Ford, Beckett's Auto, Carpenter for Hire, Swiss Storage, my mom and dad, my wife, my two boys, um, MG, Randy, Andy, Josh, Bob. Uh, Muzz, everyone over there that helps. Thank you guys a lot. All right, now let's catch up with our winner. Ben, uh, thing looked like it was on rails. Obviously, you got into some lap traffic. That made things a little easier, let you breathe a little, and uh, uh, you had quite a gap. But talk about the race and how it worked out for you. Oh, the car's been really fast all day, and it was just keeping the track position, you know what I mean? Not losing it, keeping your head in the game, and it was... It was hard, trust me. We had two weeks to think about this race. So I'm glad we kind of had the rain out because the car before wasn't this good, so we had time to work on it. But it was a good race. Now, can you think you can come back out here and back it up and uh, win two features today? The way this thing is, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, it'll be fun to watch. So, whoop, congratulations and uh, enjoy this one. Short enjoyment with your team and go back and get ready for the second race. Thank you very much.
And off they go. Brent Roy will lead the charge down into turn three. DC Alexander working the high side outside of Alex Walsh in the double zero. Three drivers up there gunning for their first late model victory. But some heavy hitters chasing them down. Frank Moulton's up to fourth, McLaughlin fifth. Like trouble for the 47 of Chris Burgess drops off the pace. Burgess quickly falling to the tail of the field. Frank Moulton stuck the nose of the 15 underneath the double zero of Alex Waltz, but wisely backed it off. And from deep in the field, here he comes once again. Chris Thorne working the high side. Oh, Alex Waltz gets bumped on the back stretch by Frank Moulton. Couple more cars together up at the top of turn two, uh, three that is. Andrew McLaughlin will move up to these third and fourth spots. Here they come out of turn four. Alexander strong on the outside. Thorne and McLaughlin wait right behind in that second row. You know those guys are patient. They will work with what they're given. Will Collins up to the fifth spot. And Ben Erskine coming into the mix as well. Erskine in sixth on the outside. Everybody bunched up behind that lead pair. DC Alexander and Brent Roy. There goes Doug Phillips down pit road. Seven cars packed up tight. All gunning for the final win of the season. Alexander drifts up wide. Brent Roy retakes the lead. Watch out for Thorne. He took a pick to the inside on the back stretch. Brent Roy in that 26R, the leader. He's got 37 career mini stock wins here at Wiscasset. Still in search of his first late model victory. Thorne looking racy in that 17, but he's kind of boxed in right now. Alexander slips a little on the outside. It's gonna drag that outside lane back a little bit. McLaughlin's caught in behind him. Alexander back into the fourth position now. McLaughlin gets locked in behind him and finally drops down into that low lane as DC Alexander continues to drop back. Will Collins. I think something started letting go on that 25 car Gets coming out of Josh St. Clair on row two. Scramble there in the back, Joey Peasley. Good job saving that number 17, but they're still spinning back there. Peasley ends up stopped in the middle of the infield. The other cars look like possibly able to drive away. Don't pull onto the track right there, son. 
Well, instead of turning left, uh, instead of turning right, he could have turned left and gone right down the infield pit road. Pace car pulls off. We are back underway. Chris Thorne at the point as we get this thing restarted. Dinsmore to his outside. Thorny trying to fight back on the inside as they head into three and four. And it's going to be Ray Dinsmore with the lead that time by. Thorne second. McLaughlin's up into third. Josh, uh, Josh St. Clair in fourth. And Frank Moulton in fifth. Brent Roy holds on in the sixth spot with DC Alexander seventh. Closing in on halfway for this 40 lap feature for the late models. Good door to door action there between Chris Thorne and Ray Dinsmore. As they fight it out, out of two, back down the back stretch. Thorny fighting back on the inside. Dinsmore one more time, showing us the top car that time by. McLaughlin holds on to the third spot with St. Clair still sitting in fourth. Not much changing, but a really good battle up front between Dinsmore and Chris Thorne. They're door to door almost the whole way. Then at the line, it seems as though Dinsmore gets just enough of a push and he's gonna do it again there. Just not quite enough for the 81 to get out around the 17. Pokes his nose out front down the back stretch, past the scoreboard into three and four. Looked like there might have been a little bit of incidental contact between the leaders that time by, but both able to hold on. Dinsmore may actually have enough this time to get out around the 17 and put the 81 up into the top spot. Down the back stretch, he will do it. So after about seven laps of battling that one out, Dinsmore finally gets the top spot. Thorn back into second. McLaughlin third, and Josh St. Clair sits in fourth. Frank Moulton is your fifth place car. Shaping up is a good battle right here between the 17 and the 81. Dinsmore, a very slim lead over Chris Thorne. Good battle there for third and fourth as well between Andrew McLaughlin and Josh St. Clair. Longest green lap, a green light run of the night for these guys or at least in this race, the first race, it went a little bit quicker. But that battle still continuing between Dinsmore, actually Ray Dinsmore actually lengthening that lead out here a little bit, looking for a win in the final race of the season for the late model. Leading it by about three tenths of a second right now, but Thorny is not going anywhere. Then a ways back to third and fourth. And that's the battle between McLaughlin and Josh St. Clair. St. Clair trying to look for a way around the 26. He may have found it. McLaughlin left the bottom open just a little bit and coming out of four. They're gonna battle for that spot. It's going to be St. Clair taking the third place spot that time by, but still has to complete that pass, does so down the back stretch. So put McLaughlin back and forth. Frank Moulton is in fifth. A 
The battle for the top spot between Dinsmore and Chris Thorne continues with eight laps to go. Actually, this will be seven when they cross the line. Dinsmore, a little wonky coming out of four, but able to hold on. Thorne not able to do much with that. Thorne trying to catch up with the 81. Every time he gets a little bit close, the 81 lengthens that lead out again. Five to go this time by. 35 down, five to go. Dinsmore continues to hold on to the top spot. There he is right there. Thorne sits in second. Connor Winters is actually a lap down. Sitting between the first and second and third and fourth place cars. Two laps to go this time by. Two laps for the late model. White flag getting ready to fly. Here comes your top two. Out of turn four for the final time, Dinsmore. With a small lead over Chris Thorne, but with this amount of time, it should be enough. Checkers are up. Your winner, Ray Dinsmore in the 81. Chris Thorne will finish second. Josh St. Clair third. Andrew McLaughlin, a good finish to the season in fourth. And Frank Moulton is your fifth place call. talk about the little engine that could that's what you guys just witnessed there's not a ton of money behind this young man it's all done out of his pocket I think he's wrecked his car earlier this year oh okay <laughs> well I guess we see him headed to the pit so I guess that explains how the little engine that could yeah no hit. doubt Chris Thorne two-time driver of the year Five-time division champion run comes home as the runner-up in this class this year. And, and, and it's basically because he missed a race. This title may have been his if he did not miss a race this year. And despite running one race less than the rest of the guys, he comes home second in points. Marion's going to bring in the trophy. Comes the champ. And they're going to get the 26 car of Andrew McLaughlin back out here. So uh, I guess you might as well start with the guys you got down there. All right, we'll, we'll start with the winner. All right, she told you to go like hell. This kid's here, you know. Oh, he is the best. He's the best? Well, I hope you don't think after you with the language. All right, Chris, we talked after the first race, and uh, you said you might have to make a little adjustment. Well, obviously, you did something. Um, you didn't cross the line first, but you got to pull up into here in the first position. So uh, talk about the race. Well, to be honest with you, I really didn't make anything for adjustments. I put about a quarter of a turn into the sway bar. That was it. It's just uh, the difference in, uh, you know, going from day to night. This car always likes it when it's cooler and cold out. But uh, The race was good. You know, we got it right up to the front, right off quick. Uh, it was a heck of a race with the 81 car, but... I, uh, I had my suspicions that there might be something funny going on there, but I think it's pretty good that this whole thing with 8-inch tires keeps up with a 10-inch tire car. Yeah, well, there you go. But uh, congratulations, great way to finish the season. I think they said you missed a race earlier in the year, so that would kind of affected your points, chasing. But uh, still a great year over here at Wiscasa Speedway for you. 
Yeah, um, I really wasn't uh, going for the championship. That wasn't on my radar, so we took a week off and did some family stuff. But nonetheless, you know, uh, congratulations to Josh, by the way. I, I think it might be his first championship, believe it or not. I know he's won a million races, but those guys have been working all year, and congratulations to him and their whole family. Andrew, you're one of my fa I've told you this over and over again. You're one of my favorite guys to watch. I was glad to pull in today and see you were racing, and... Uh, Man, to have you and Josh and Chris end up on the podium in the last late model race of the year, this is, you guys are three of the best races that this class has all through New England. And, uh, you know, I know finishing third sucks, but third to those guys is like a win, ain't it? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, I'm a big fan of your show and all you do for racing. And uh, these guys ahead of me are both class acts. And uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rather be in here with anybody else than those guys. Finishing third isn't obviously what I want, but car hasn't been quite how I wanted it this year, but we showed up today and had some fun and had a couple of good runs. Yeah, so now, uh, obviously, you, you know, we talked earlier, the fishing business there and, you know, life and family and all that takes priority over racing. What do you think for 22? I mean, you're going to have more time to spend at the racetrack down here, and I know you're a crowd favorite, a fan favorite, and a uh, guy capable of winning on any given week. Yeah, I'm not sure. If, if I'm going to be racing, it will probably be here, you know, uh, well, it will be here. I love it here, and uh, everybody that helps out with the place. And uh, I haven't really decided. Uh, I've been racing pretty hard since about 2008. This is the first year that I've kind of missed some races. I I just I can't keep up with working on the car and uh, going lobstering every day and stuff like that. I just don't have the energy like I like I did when I was a young fella to keep up with what it takes. And uh, I could come race usually. Uh, Thanks to my dad, he puts in more time, really, than I do on the car nowadays, and I, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for him. But uh, I'm very competitive, and I know what it takes at home in the shop during the week, and I just I haven't had the time to put towards it, but I'm, I'm hopeful that 2022 will bring me back to a full-time schedule. All right, well, if nothing else, you finished off 2021 in a strong way. Yes, thank you very much. Talk to the cha Hey, you got that 100 I lent you a couple weeks ago? No, I had to buy a tire. Tonight. You had to buy a tire. Listen, Gramps was supposed to give you 100 Then he said today you're going to change the rules up next year. If I'm in the race with you guys and I can win the race, he'll pay me 500 Not motorized or what? Well, it don't matter how I win the race, right? <laughs> yeah, we ain't yeah. going to have tech like we do here. But, uh, hey, you did what you had to do today. You know, you didn't force any issues. You kind of got a comfortable spot on the track to wrap up a championship. Now, Chris said, is this your first championship? Since 2004 I've been doing this, and this is the first one. So how big is this for you personally? Oh, it's huge. You know, it's another milestone in the, in the racing deal. Uh, I've raced a lot of places, won a lot of races, but never put it all together to make a full season. So the opportunity to be racing for a championship tonight and then uh, the ninth coming up, uh, another chance to run for two more is, is a season to remember, that's for sure. So uh, I got to thank everyone, you know, from my, my kids right here who gets excited to sh get ready Saturday morning to my wife. My mother, my father, all the people on the stands, my grandfather, these are all his cars. He lets us all drive. And, and uh, you know, Chris Duell, Matt Abbott, Nate, uh, Nate Carter, uh, all my sponsors, everyone that show up every, every weekend to watch me have fun. Uh, it, without them, it doesn't happen. So, And I got to thank this place, man. How what cool is it uh, to come down here and race every week with all the people. So, that, uh, you know. It would have been real sweet to get that Strictly Street win, but uh, she broke. So that's how racing goes. Oh, yeah, you're going to have more bad days than you are good days in racing. But uh, you talk about the family, and uh, to, to take this all back to those guys, and obviously Gramps, he's done it all. And, uh, but now you, you're starting to make your own name. You've been doing this forever. You got that championship, the monkey off your back. You know, you're a respected racer. You know, and that, that, that doesn't come with how much money you spend and how much time you put into it and how many races you win. It's how you race on the track and how you become a, a, a role model to the, to the fans and other people off the track. And, and you have absolutely set yourself above a lot of the other competitors with what you do for the sport. Yeah, uh, and I tried uh, you know, to run a different show in my own life uh, <laughs> lately. So um, it, it just falls in line. You know, uh, Give what you want back, and uh, that's it. When I first started, I was quite a punk. And I run into a lot of people, and I didn't make a lot of friends. So uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, show, try to be the best I can every day. I guess that's all. 
Well, I think you've got a lot of fans that support you on a weekly basis. And now you can now officially call yourself a champion. Congratulations, and let's hear it for the 2021 late model champion at Wisconsin Speedway, Josh Sinclair.